Do you have hair loss, acne, trouble losing weight, irregular cycles, excess facial hair growth, infertility, or other symptoms of polycystic ovary syndrome, aka PCOS? Maybe your doctor has run labs to look for signs of PCOS, like testosterone levels, but they all come back normal. Well, guess what? Testosterone isn't the whole story. Keep watching, because in this video, I'm going to explain how other androgen hormones can cause PCOS symptoms and how accurate assessment of these hormones can help you effectively treat your symptoms using functional medicine. Despite the fact that polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, is one of the most common endocrine disorders, it's often misdiagnosed. One study found that it took an average of two years and three different doctors for women to be properly diagnosed with PCOS. One of the reasons this happens is an incomplete understanding and assessment of the hormones that trigger the symptoms and complications of PCOS, specifically androgen hormones like testosterone. I see this a lot in real life. Women come to me because they have several of the telltale signs of PCOS and they've been told they might have PCOS by their doctors, but their blood work is normal, which leaves them without a plan or appropriate treatment strategies. Leaving women stuck with PCOS symptoms is bad enough, but we also know that if untreated, women with PCOS have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, autoimmunity, mood disorders like anxiety, and other chronic conditions. So it's extremely important that we address the underlying dysfunction. Although it's very common, there's nothing simple about PCOS or its cause. Many body systems and factors are involved, including insulin resistance, genetic variants, chronic stress, exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals, poor methylation, systemic inflammation, and dysfunctional androgen hormones and hormone metabolites including testosterone, which is what I'm focusing on in this video. Specifically, I'm going to talk through how it's possible to have normal or even low levels of testosterone on a blood test and still have PCOS. But before we get into the role of these specific hormones, let's cover what PCOS is, how it's diagnosed, and what kinds of symptoms it can trigger. PCOS is a term that describes a complex hormonal condition with symptoms ranging from mild to severe. Some of the more common signs and symptoms include oily skin and acne, especially on the chin and jawline, hair loss and thinning on the scalp, weight gain, especially in the abdominal area, patches of dark thickened skin, dark hair growth on the chest, face, abdomen, and upper thighs, infertility, not getting periods, infrequent or skipping of periods, heavy periods, high cholesterol or blood sugar, and even high blood pressure. Many women don't know they have PCOS until they struggle to get pregnant, often because their other symptoms are overlooked or covered up by hormonal birth control. Diagnosis is based on the presence of at least two of three criteria, irregular or absent periods due to lack of ovulation, Ovarian cysts or immature follicles visualized on diagnostic testing, most often an ultrasound, and or elevated androgen hormones or androgenic symptoms, also called hyperandrogenism. So what are these androgen hormones and where do they come from? Androgens are often thought of as male hormones, but women need them too. Testosterone is the most well-known androgen, but there are several other hormones with androgenic activity that we don't typically talk about or measure. More on these in a minute. It's important to remember that androgens aren't bad. Maintaining adequate androgens keeps women strong by supporting bone and muscle health, stamina, and recovery. Androgens also support mood, energy, memory, immune health, cardiovascular health, and sexual function in women. And during menopause, they also help produce estrogens. However, when someone has PCOS, the ovaries, adrenal glands, and fat cells of the body may overproduce testosterone or another androgen called 
dihydroepiandrosterone, aka DHEA. Sometimes we can see these elevated levels on the person's blood work, and they'll often correlate with symptoms like acne, excess body hair, or androgenic alopecia, which is a type of female balding or hair thinning on the scalp. But what if you have these kinds of symptoms without elevated testosterone or DHEA? What if your blood work is normal? Well, it turns out that testosterone and DHEA don't tell the whole story. This is where things get interesting and a little tricky, so hang in there with me. While testosterone and DHEA both have androgenic activity in the body, so do their respective metabolites or breakdown products like dihydrotestosterone or DHT, androstanediol, DHEA sulfate, etiocholanolone, and androsterone. The potency or strength of these hormone metabolites is different than the parent hormones themselves. For example, 5-alpha-DHT is four times more potent than testosterone, while androsterone is weaker than testosterone. This means that even though your testosterone is within a normal range, if your body is making lots of 5-alpha-DHT, you could still be experiencing the effect of too much androgenic activity, which triggers or leads to worse androgenic symptoms. On the other hand, if your body makes more etiocholanolone instead, which is a weak androgen metabolite, you'll be less likely to experience androgenic symptoms and they'll be less severe. So what determines the strength or potency of these androgen metabolites with the very long names? Let me introduce you to an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. If your body uses this enzyme to break down testosterone or DHEA, the resulting metabolites are more potent or androgenic compared to 5-beta reductase. Imagine that the process of breaking down androgen hormones is like a river flowing downstream. And when it comes time to break down androgens, the water can flow down the 5-alpha reductase branch of the river or the 5-beta reductase branch. The 5-alpha branch of the river turns into rushing rapids with a powerful current and maybe even a waterfall or two because these metabolites are potent androgens that trigger androgenic symptoms, whereas the 5-beta branch of the river flows quietly and softly, having much less androgenic action. The good news is, that we can influence how your body metabolizes or breaks down these androgens. If we follow the river analogy, we can help send more water down the 5-beta pathway using food, micronutrients, and even some nutraceuticals. I'll share specifics with you in a moment. But first, we need to be able to determine if or how much 5-alpha reductase activity is happening in your body. And a simple blood test isn't going to do it. We need to be measuring hormone metabolites as well, like 5-alpha-DHT and 5-beta-androstanediol and others. If we fail to test or we ignore these potent androgens, we can miss out on many, many root cause treatment strategies that can dramatically improve symptoms. Thankfully, the Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones, or the Dutch test, measures these crucial androgen metabolites. There's even a handy slider bar on the Dutch report that tells you if your 5-alpha reductase activity is high or low, which helps you understand where all of that androgenic action is coming from. The Dutch Complete also measures hormones like progesterone, estradiol, cortisol, and many other hormone metabolites. I use it with every one of my PCOS clients, and it always leads to new revelations and treatment possibilities. I'll put a link to more info about the Dutch in the video description for you to check out. Let's say you discover that your 5-alpha reductase enzyme is working extra hard and cranking out some potent androgen metabolites. How can we shift away from this pathway and towards weaker androgens? Well, there are many foods, herbs, and phytonutrients that help slow down or inhibit 5-alpha reductase. And for your convenience, I've compiled them into a handy PDF document that you can download for free at the end of this video. I always like to start with using food as medicine, which puts green tea, 
flaxseed, and oily fish at the top of our androgen management list for PCOS. I always recommend drinking tea that is unsweetened and organic because of the high concentration of endocrine disrupting pesticides used in conventional tea farming. If you don't love the taste of green tea, you could also consider supplementing with epigallocatechin gallate, or EGCG, which is one of the active compounds in green tea. When it comes to fatty fish, it's best to consume sustainably harvest wild-caught types like salmon, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, and herring. These are the types of fish with some of the highest omega fatty acid concentration. Quercetin also inhibits 5-alpha reductase, and it can be found in foods like dark-colored grapes, apples, dark berries, kale, red onions, broccoli, dill, and capers. Quercetin has many other health benefits, including immune support, blood sugar support, and inflammation modulation. A few of my favorite herbs that reduce 5-alpha reductase activity include saw palmetto, stinging nettle root, chasteberry, aka vitex, black cohosh, and pygium. As with any herb, it's important that the correct part of the plant is utilized and that the correct extraction techniques are used when formulating them into a supplement. It's also important to standardize the dose of the active ingredient. All of this to say that there are a few products that I trust that follow these correct procedures and perform third-party testing to ensure that what you're getting actually matches what's on the bottle. Unfortunately, not all supplements are created equal in terms of quality and efficacy. You'll find details about my preferred products, including suggested dose, in the free checklist. You're also welcome to purchase anything you need from my Fullscript dispensary and take advantage of a nice discount, so be sure to check that out. If you take away one thing from this video, I hope it's a sense of hope. Hope that you can find the answers you're looking for, that there is more to uncover beyond standard blood tests, that there are more treatment options than you've been offered, and that with a root cause approach that works with your body's unique needs and strengths, you can get relief. I hope that you found this information here clarifying and helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe to my channel. And be sure to check out the link in the video description for the free checklist and other resources I mentioned. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more functional medicine strategies. We'll see you in the next video.